Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Thursday as we uh, look at the uh, weather service warnings and watches that are up. Uh, we have uh, winter storm warnings up for parts of northeastern Nebraska and southern areas of South Dakota. We have numerous winter weather advisories up for uh, Wyoming and uh, into uh, southern Montana. Uh, we also have uh, winter storm warnings for some parts of northwestern Colorado and you have isolated pockets of winter storm warnings up to the north in Wyoming and even in Montana. And we have a blizzard watch up for parts of uh, northeastern South Dakota and southwestern Minnesota. And the winter storm watches, which will go to warnings uh, probably uh, sometime uh, early on uh, Thursday morning uh, across uh, the rest of the area here that you see in the blue. Uh, when we look at, I'm going to try to use a few different maps uh, to give you a view. This is the surface map um, courtesy of Pivotal Weather. Uh, so go to pivotalweather.com and you can see uh, uh, a different flavor of the maps. Uh, they're just a little more difficult for me to maneuver through, but uh, you can see from uh, the surface map here, which is for uh, tomorrow evening, where it has <clears throat> snow uh, falling uh, through much of northern Colorado and through the Dakotas. And you have uh, precipitation that's just starting to move its way up uh, into uh, Minnesota. You have high pressure here in the eastern states. So we're trapped between this developing system and the one that's out in the Atlantic. And that one uh, is keeping things rather nice and tranquil here in the east and you've got some cold air that's coming down out of Canada uh, to cover the northern plains and that's why they're getting the snow that they're getting so in terms of snowfall for that area just to show you um, out of this storm the amounts of snow aren't really all that high I mean they're generally running in the three to six inch range across South Dakota one to four inches across Nebraska but then you start to get into the higher amounts as you get into northeastern um, South Dakota, southeastern North Dakota, and then on up into Minnesota. Then you start one, coming up with the one foot plus amounts in the northeastern corner of the state, and then the amounts lower as you head into the upper peninsula of Michigan because of the fact that the low is going up in this direction uh, to the northeast. We'll switch regions now, and I'll show you what's going to happen, at least by the standpoint of the GFS model, in the eastern part of the United States. Uh, with respect to uh, the developments this weekend. Now, the GFS has a weaker system. It's further north. It's not nearly as dynamic uh, as what was being shown a few days ago. So, you know, generally, it's, this is uh, lake effect snows that are going to occur in the one to four inch range. You get to some higher amounts in the Adirondacks and uh, also up into northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, where there's some six inch amounts. This might be a bit underdone. Um, the problem is when we look at the upper air so i'll switch over to the uh upper air map and you can see it here uh i know a few of you were saying about the map colors and all but let me just show you on this particular one these are very very tight here's the upper trough that's swinging in from the west and if you remember a couple of days ago uh with this and i'll just back it up and show you um if we go back uh just uh, 24 hours ago, uh, you can see the difference. This is from 24 hours ago with this big upper low that was supposed to be somewhere. Let's let's uh, imagine it's somewhere in western Massachusetts where the upper low center is. So there was much more energy involved here as opposed to what we're seeing right now, uh, which is a, in fact, let me just switch over. I'll just go back even a little further. Let's go back to Monday. For the same time frame and you can see there's a fairly deep trough that's swinging to the east um, this has kind of changed a little bit uh, as we go into now you can see the difference it's, it's a lot uh, for it's further north it's not as deep <clears throat> it's certainly not like the european model was uh, where it had it still has a wrapped up upper air low down in uh, southern new england so you know that's going to make a difference in terms of you know what kind of local snow showers we get over the weekend but this is not going to be based on this model this is not going to be a big widespread snowfall um, that was being indicated yesterday if we look at the NAM model the upper air feature is deeper here in the eastern states and when we put the snowfall 
totals you can see it still even with that deep feature now the nam doesn't go out far enough the nam only takes us into sunday morning so we have to add on what falls for the rest of sunday and into monday across this region so um, the amounts are going to be eventually higher than what the uh, model shows what the gfs shows we'll switch to the canadian model and see how much of that we got a pretty good dose of the canadian model and you can see on the canadian very robust with the snowfalls in upstate new york some 10 14 inch amounts being generated uh, in parts of the adirondacks uh, even has some seven and eight inch amounts into northern pennsylvania um, you know some four or five inch amounts going down to the southwestern pennsylvania with a little batch of lake effect here coming in off lake erie with that nine inch maximum and the southern edge of measurable actually even gets into northern new jersey on this particular model so you know what let's look at the surface and we'll see what the, what's going on um, this is so for when let me just back it up so you can take a look you know the, the canadian you know, see the canadian wants to develop this now wants to go back to developing the surface low over new york city and then taking it up into massachusetts so if that happens that's going to mean for more snow up in this region uh, the gfs on the other hand if we put that up you'll see here it's much less robust the key the surface low is way up to the northwest it redevelops uh in near um in southeastern new england and then moves on up uh into maine let's take a look by the way let's go look at the upper air because I, of the wider upper air because i think it's important that we just kind of get a flavor for what's going to happen during next week and beyond you know we still have let's just back up so we get to the beginning okay so this is uh now this is that ocean storm and see this is not nearly as deep as it was so it doesn't act as the as an efficient block to force this energy to the southeast uh, instead it just lifts up and out and but now we have another trough that's coming across and this would be for thanksgiving day it's not all that you know it's there you can, you can pick it out it's not overly strong and then that goes out and then over time, we have another system that comes in for Thanksgiving weekend in the east. And you can see the blocking pattern, how it, it's impacting the atmosphere because the, the jet stream is well to the south. The main jet stream on this map is way to the south. So you got, uh, let me just change the colors for you. Let's see, you know what, we'll go black. How's that? so it stands out better so you can see the main jet stream is way to the south in canada here's your blocking high up to the north so canada is kind of disorganized but it's covered with mostly higher pressures the cold air is displaced southward uh, into the united states the colder air relatively speaking so we are seeing this new pattern that has emerged and i think it's going to be with us for quite a while because of uh, what we're seeing uh, in a lot of the uh, higher levels of the atmosphere and my cat has to make his appearance say hi <laughs> okay so um, you know the bottom line is that you know we're going to see we're going to see a much more wintry pattern you know we look at the surface map I think that's probably a little more interesting and here's what I think by the way for Thanksgiving week and I'm going to take an early stab at this you see how the GFS okay, after that first system goes out and as we move through Thanksgiving week another that next trough comes along now it takes a low up into northern Indiana and northern Ohio across northern Pennsylvania and then right over Long Island so snows are going to fall to the north of that and you can see them up way up to the north but I think what's going to happen is you're going to have a weaker low that's going to be further south um, with less precip but there might be more frozen or freezing precip on the northern fringe as we go into Thanksgiving Day. So we're going to watch for that trend. The European supports that idea. And then you have the next system for Thanksgiving weekend, which uh, it takes uh, from, uh, again, this may be wind up being further south and not as deep and then comes off the east coast. And you can see that produces some rain and snow there for uh, the weekend that follows Thanksgiving. So I'm going to update this during the day on Thursday when we get uh, all the overnight models in and we'll look at the European. In the meantime, um, just make sure you check out the websites. I'll put the links up, up for you um, 
all the latest on meteorologist Joe Chaffee dot com, uh, weatherlongisland.com, and uh, nycweathernow.com, and we also have ssstormchasers.com.